May I suggest that time is running short, yeah. we go on to the famous fossil thing, sir, because yeah. I'm sure the huh. I'm sure oh. the audience you know this sir. Uh, it's a piece of comic relief, rather, the fossil thing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, As you have said, Professor, yes. this title fossil yes. has almost entered the international vocabulary <laughs> since you used yeah. it in the context yeah. you did. And as I understood from reading your works over the past few days, mm -hmm. nights, I should say, they are, there are fossils and there are also peoples in the archaic sense. Yeah. And I said yeah. earlier, yeah. Uh, we seem to be in both. We're both a fossil <laughs> with the Parsis in India, and when it comes yeah. to archaism, yeah. we have a link with the Norwegians, the Greeks, <laughs> the Turks, and the Irish. Yeah. Well, I would say that yeah. at least in the archaic angle, yeah. I've got associations from childhood. Yeah. As far as the Parsis, I'm yeah. afraid, I, I have no acquaintance. They're very interesting people. Professor, <laughs> 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 uh, well, may I say this? Yes. I'm not a historian. Yeah. Uh, your thesis has been challenged by historians of great eminence and writers. Yes. There's quite a vocabulary of reply to, they call it in various terms, the tone of be thesis, the tone of be heresy. Don't I know it? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I understand you're going to write... Aubrey Eben, is it? Try and be heresy. Yes, yes Eben, yeah. Eben, yes. the heresy. Yeah. Uh, there's also the professor and the fossil. Yes. And yeah. um, there was another one, that, that, um, <laughs> yes, with two books of the kind, yes. Yes, and there's also Judaism, fossil, or faith, yes. something like that. Yes. I would only ask you, I'm a diplomat representing my country, and my experience in this field is contemporary times. I've not studied deeply history as you have. But I would ask you, in all objectivity as a historian, sir, if I may, our concept of our life down the ages, I can sum it up in a verse yeah. from Psalms. Yeah. It is lo amut ki ech ye va asaper maaseka. I shall not yeah. die, but I shall live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A fossil yeah. doesn't die, yeah. but he also doesn't yeah. live. Yeah. Here we part yeah. ways. Yeah. And as we live and through our survival down the ages, we see the hand of providence. We have the the sense of survival under providence and we move ahead as we've prayed to spiritual fulfillment. Here lies the basic difference between us. You say to us, you did not die. Why is not clear. <coughs> but you did not live. No continuity in terms of creative life and thought. You've sort of slipped out of the stream of civilization. Some remote island got stuck there. Now and then your voice is heard as it shrieks of the passing ships. We say, no, we have been in the stream. We have been in the stream in a distinctive sense, in our survival, in our prayer, in our hope, in our attachment to our land, and in our belief in the fulfillment of immortal prophecy. But that is an issue, and I am not a historian. As I say, others are debating that with you. But I would ask you, as a modern Israeli, representing my country, and one who has seen the country come to life and independence, from the academic historical analysis point of view, as you scan the yeah. canvas of history, yeah. Professor, is there no significance in the following facts which cannot be denied? Number one, that the ancient peoples of the Middle East, we are the only one living in continuity today in the Middle East, speaking the same language, practicing the same religious faith. Mention the past years. Uh, well, uh, I'm talking of the Middle East. Yeah. <laughs> Rabbi Jochen and Ben Zakkai, yeah. yeah. whom you devote much attention. Yeah. He and Rabbi Akiva and Bar Kochba, they came yes. to life. They yeah. could live with us. They would not find a dichotomy which snapped them asunder. There's a continuity of experience. I'm just raising this for your attention, sir. Yeah. Secondly, that after this passage through the valley of death down the ages, and you yourself have described in your book, you caucus the, the, the ashes of diaspora, mm. As we've come to life in our time, we've come to life without rancor. Despite all that has passed between us and our Arab neighbors, I can assure you, and you will see this if you come to Israel, there is no rancor, there's no hatred, there's grief, but there's a hope for peace every day. And there's a confidence yeah. that will come. Nor is there rancor to nations across the world and systems and doctrines whom we have met and had a dialogue at times a very serious 
one and accompanied with tragedy for us mm -hmm. down the ages. This very vitality of life and survival without rancor, this too I would submit has a certain significance in terms of historical analysis. Thirdly, after these thousands of years we've assembled our people from 70 lands, the Yemenites from the remote deserts of Yemen who were cut off for over 2,000 years from the stream of civilization, with the crave dwellers of Morocco, Jews from East West Europe, Nazi death camps, the remote hinterland of India. They've all come together and they found a common nation spontaneously. Has that link got no vitality? Was that a fossil? Is that how a fossil reacts? All these particles of the fossil come together and they feel one. I'm just finishing, sir. <laughs> Finally, the question of democracy. Mm -hmm. After all this experience, we are the only viable democracy in terms of the Israel-Arab complex in the area. And finally, the fact is that today, many new nations from Africa and Asia turn to us for guidance, for cooperation. And they find in, in our experiment, in our enterprise, they find something which draws them as a link. So we do have a message for the world, and not, sir, as you've suggested, that our message seized sometime 2,300 years ago. May I just finish by saying what I'm trying to say is being expressed very vividly Professor Lewis Mumford in his conduct of life. He says the binding force of an ethical force based on purpose has been dramatically confirmed in the history of the Jew. Its practical consummation in our time perhaps merits our special note. We believe that our survival is an index of the supremacy of spiritual over material value, we believe in all humility and thanks to a grateful providence that it has a relevance to the broad experience of mankind today. I would ask you, sir, in all respect, whether you don't think all these elements have any basis on which you could possibly reconsider your concept of us as a fossil, non-creative, which suddenly fell out, neither died nor lived for the past 2,300 years. It's rather a curious point about this word uh, fossil that um, um, I've never used it of uh, the uh, Jewish people alone. I've always used it of a whole class of peoples. Um, this is rather an academic point, really, and um, sorry to inflict my theories of history on you. I've uh, tried to map out um, uh, a kind of picture of civilizations, and I find that uh, there were several uh, generations or series of civilizations, um, uh, some of which uh, uh, died out uh, perhaps several thousand years ago, others are alive today. But I did find that um, uh, of the civilizations that um, died out uh, quite a long time ago, certain um, uh, exceptional communities, um, the Jews, the uh, Parsis, one branch of the Buddhists, uh, a certain rather obscure Christian sects, the Monophysites and Nestorians, I don't know if you know about them, uh, anyway, were um, surviving representatives of a civilization whose um, um, other members uh, had uh, become uh, uh, extinct in the sense not that human beings they become extinct, but they become absorbed into other civilizations, races, peoples, and so on. None of the other people whom I label as fossils has ever complained. I thought uh, this uh, pointing out that these people had had this great survival power was rather complimentary. And the only complaints I've had have been from Jews, and they've complained as if I'd um, uh, stuck the Jews with this label alone and uh, not the other people. I don't know why this is, particularly. Um, uh, I think a, a fossil is... Um, uh, all, all our labels are more or less imperfect. Um, uh, it's quite true. It doesn't convey the idea that... Um, 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 communities surviving from a previous civilization are, after all, still alive, because human beings that are surviving are alive, and they do things, and that's just quite right about this. Um, I've got a longish section uh, about this uh, uh, word fossil in a forthcoming volume of Reconsiderations, or Second Thoughts that I'm publishing, which is a great deal about Jewish history, as a matter of fact, coming out on the 4th of May. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to advertise my own works. Um, um, I said... Um, um, uh, 
Could we take some word for a living creature? Just when I was thinking about this, uh, off South Africa, they found an uh, antediluvian fish called the coelacanthus. Could I substitute the word coelacanthus for fossil? Would that be any more uh, 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 attractive to people I'd label fossil? I thought probably it wouldn't. And uh, after all, the coelacanthus is uh, a very uh, archaic form of life. And uh, the other are quite right to um, present day Jews. Uh, by no means archaic, they're in the full stream of um, life. But isn't it true that uh, for, um, from the time of the Roman Wars, uh, really, um, in the time of Philo of Alexandria, the, uh, uh, or in the time when the uh, Christian Acts of the Apostles were written, uh, you see the position of the Jewish communities in the Greek or Roman world, they were, uh, as they are today in the Western world, they were living very much in the stream, as the ambassador says, of the, the um, common life of uh, that civilization. Uh, under the shock of the Roman Wars, I do think that the uh, Jewish communities uh, withdrew into a kind of shell. They gave up uh, writing and speaking Greek and uh, went back to uh, Hebrew, um, or rather Aramaic, perhaps. And um, uh, for many centuries, they remained uh, encased, partly by their own will, partly by the bad treatment they received from um, uh, uh, Christians, especially Western Christians, I think. Uh, and it's only since the... Um, uh, Napoleonic time almost, you might say, except in uh, some very early enlightened countries like uh, Holland and uh, Tuscany, which began doing this in the 16th and 17th centuries, that the Jews were, uh, the doors were open to the Jews and they were brought back into the full stream of life. The tragic point about uh, this again is that I think on both the Jewish side as well as on the Gentile side, there have been certain uh, reservations uh, about forming uh, a single community. I, I suppose Jews feel that the Gentiles haven't really entirely received them into the Gentile community, and Gentiles feel that the Jews have uh, uh, not entirely uh, come into the uh, 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 Gentile community. But uh, uh, comparatively, compared to the situation before, say, about 1800, uh, the, the Jews in uh, uh, present times have, of course, become part of the general stream of life and have uh, played this enormous part in it. Um, I'm Fossilize, sir? Um, uh, yes, you can defossilize, just as you can defrost a car. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting. Yes. Um, I, I've never um, denied this, and uh, I haven't found another word to express what I mean. This is a particular category of uh, communities, and from the, so to speak, scientific or sociological point of view, it, it does need a name. Uh, find me a better name and I'll use it. Uh, well, Professor, what yeah. about the points I raised earlier? Yeah. I think, do you accept that these considerations of vitality I mentioned earlier, related to Israel's return and restoration, have they anything to do with the defossilization? Are they signs for you historically speaking, of a vitality? Uh, I think, of course, that uh, the Gentile Westerners invented nationalism, which I uh, strongly dislike, and that the uh, Jews caught this disease from the um, Western Gentiles, which is very unfortunate. Well, it's been a long, long, long disease with us. And, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Many, many, yeah. many physicians have tried yeah. to cure us down the ages. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, we refuse to be yeah. cured. Yes. The, the point, Professor, what yeah. I mean is, I'm not talking now, I know that you're opposed to the modern state. You, yes. you want a yes. world state. Yes. Well, I mean, there are many people, also in Israel, who think that yes. we must move to much more yes. world cooperation yes. without giving up on its independence, a different matter. Yes, I agree. What I'm saying is the attributes which have been shown now by the people in Israel, now not talking of the state in the formal sense. No. The attribution, attribute of survival, of vitality, of democracy, of lack of rancor, of sense of peace, of cooperation, of uh, this growing pattern with new nations of the world. After 2,000 years of exile, do you think historically this has some, some significance? But I've never denied that the Jews have always been alive, and I've never denied that I have, uh, have criticized some forms of vitality of Israel has taken, but I've never denied the vitality. But what I would say is this, that this creativity, and I take it right down to modern times, what I'm very happy about is that you agree today that the fossil has become defossilized. Now, the problem is not so much now finding alternative term for the fossil since it became a fossil till now, but finding a term for the new creature which is being defossilized. Yeah. If I may say in conclusion, just in this point, uh, I do hope, sir, before you pass another judgment, before your new book comes out, if possible, that you would visit Israel and weigh up the process yeah. of defossilization in your context yeah. and see this vitality and compare yeah. it in a historic span. 
and then let us have your conclusions. I hope you will be able to come, and um, I'm sure our people are very happy to show you the country and to answer any questions. And uh, we have no objection at all if you visit the neighboring countries and have a broad Middle Eastern view of the situation. Thank you, because vitality is not uh, enough. Morality, we'll just come back to that. Morality well, we, vitality I think is grand. On the morality <laughs> issue, <laughs> you yourself have agreed that we are like other peoples. That again can be looked into when you visit Israel. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, you very, very much, Mr. Ambassador. <laughs>